Welcome back everybody. In this video I'll be showing you how to make a Zelda style UI uh, system so that when we take damage from these cats it uh, slowly takes away our health. Uh, so let's get straight into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just tell you about how uh, we make UI work just so anyone can uh, figure out straight away. Okay so I've just plopped an actor into the scene. We can make it uh, be any we can make it be any sprite we want. I'll just set it to this radio. And if we click pin to screen up at the top right here, you see how it uh, it makes the rest of the scene black and just has this area. This is basically imagining the screen space, right? So if I was to put that here, uh, it would mean that this is pinned to the screen. And I'll just show you what that means. Okay, so you can see the as we move, the radio at the top left that we put down, we pin to the screen, is stuck there uh, and this means uh, it's, it's a normal actor obviously it doesn't have collision but it does mean that we can basically do anything we want with it what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put hearts there just like in Zelda um, you could also have a score there but uh, you have to remember that the amount of actors like allowed to be lined up at once is very limited so it it will stop you from doing some things you want to do uh, and also it will take the frame count down for your scene because you'll be, for example, if you're using numbers, then you'll need at least 10 numbers from 0 to 9 to uh, calculate that, um, which does take up a big chunk of your uh, limit. But uh, let's jump into GIMP now and uh, and start making a UI. So what it needs to be is... A 16 high by however many um, frames you want. I think I'm going to put mine as 64. The width of my canvas will be 64 uh, pixels, meaning that should we should have four sprite or four frames. So what I'm going to do is just make the background the green color that we need. Uh, all of these colors are on the gbstudio.dev website. I can I'll link it in the bottom in the description. And I've set the grid to 8 pixels like I always do. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just draw a couple of hearts. Um, and I I might make them quite big. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw one heart. And then in the game, we'll duplicate it and have them side by side. So it will be a big thing on the screen and making the most of our actor space. Because unfortunately, GB Studio doesn't let you have actors that are 8 by 8 pixels. Meaning that it's not very optimized for for UI, but we'll just we'll just make do and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've made a nice heart shape, and I'm just going to duplicate that across. Um, the idea for this will be that there'll be four frames, and uh, each one of them will have a different uh, like value technically. Uh, so when there's when they're side by side, you'll be able to tell how many uh, like sections of your heart are left. So I'm just gonna draw an X in it. You should remember to keep to the to the uh, to the colors that you're allowed to use. Um, so now, I so what I've done is I've made four, I've made a heart and I've cut it into four sections so that it will have four different uh, like health points, I guess. And uh, then I just need to to fill in the colors of what they uh, of how many hearts they are. Okay, yeah. So the first one will have all white. The second one will have three white. Then two white, and then one white, and then when it's uh, on the on the fifth one, it will have no. It will be hidden. But actually, now I'm thinking of it, I might make a fourth one that has uh, zero. So what I need to do is increase the canvas size by 16 um, on the width. So what that does is uh, mean that we can make a heart that has uh, all of them. Uh, blacked out. So I'll just show you. 
Okay, now what I'm going to do is take the black color and I'm going to I'm going to fill in the rest of this. And what that will mean is we have a heart that has four sections and that when we take damage can be displayed as 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 we're losing losing parts of our life. Uh, so what I'm going to do is save it and export it into it and then get back to you. Just a reminder, you need to export it into the assets folder into the sprites folder into the uh, project file that you're uh, using in GB Studio. Uh, otherwise it won't uh, display or like it won't be there. Like if you just save it into a random folder, it, it, there's no way of it uh, referencing it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this radio with the heart. And now you can see we have hearts up here. Uh, and obviously that means I can also put two hearts here, three hearts here, four hearts here. And so we could make it so when the character levels up, they get more hearts. Uh, and it will be only using five frames, which obviously we know that it cuts into this uh, frame limit. Um, but And also it cuts into the actor's limit. And if we have too many, it might not display properly. So you need to keep that in mind. But if you know what the maximum is, you can work back from there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just going to keep two for now. Just to keep it simple. Um, actually, I'll keep it even simpler and just have one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call this uh, heart one just so that uh, we can keep track of it more easily. And we're going to make it so on player hit group three, we already made it so that when the cats hit us, it changes. Uh, it makes us hide, then wait, then hide, and then show, then wait. So we flash. And what I want to do now is make it so when we get hit, it, it changes this heart sprite to a different frame. So we want to go from... Uh, for, from full hearts to, you know, a quarter missing, half missing, three quarters missing, and then black. And then we'd want to reset the scene. Uh, and we can do that on when we get hit in here. So first thing I, I want to do is I want to make it so when you're flashing, you can't get hit. Like, you can't uh, take more damage. Uh, and that's because... It could mean that if you get hit multiple times at once, like, you know, by multiple cats, it would take off more than one heart piece at a time and be very frustrating for the player. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to set a math function of a new variable and I'll call it I might rename one of these quest variables. So I'm going to call this uh, variable immunity just so that we uh, we know that we're immune. Uh, so I want to set uh, immunity to true once we get hit and i want this actually this event to be an if false so if immunity is false then we do this so we just find the immunity value so if immunity is false we do this and we can disable the else because we don't need it to do anything else so so we, as soon as uh, we get hit and immunity is false it sets it to true so it can't happen again uh, it then does the flash and then we can set it to uh, false at the end. So this will mean we can't get hit at multiple times at once. Uh, and now before we end this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to do another math function, and I'm going to set it to actually what I'm going to do is subtract a value of one. And this means that when we initiate the scene, we need to make sure that we set the player's health to 4. So let's just set the math function to... So I'm just going to rename uh, a variable and call it hearts uh, as the health. Um, and we want to set it to a value of 4. And this obviously m means that uh, uh, this is the... F we're, we're full health right now. So what we want to actually do is uh, is on update we want to we want to say to this heart value, um, switch. So, depending on what heart value it is, we want it to display something else. So we'll keep it simple for now and have four, and then the else will be the zero. Um, so when the hearts are on four, we want to set the frame to zero. Pretty simple. Uh, for three, you want to set it to one. For two, you want to set it to 
to uh, two. And for when it's got one heart, we set the animation frame to three. And obviously we can easily, uh, we could have done it backwards in GIMP. We could have, uh, we could have made this backwards so that the zero is zero and the four is four. And that might be a very smart idea to do, but it doesn't really matter right now. Um, I might change it in the future, but like I said, it's such a simple uh, uh, value and it doesn't really change anything. And you mustn't forget to put in zero. We have frame four. So now on update, it's checking to see how much, how many hearts it has. Um, and if we go back to the the on player hit in the scene, in the, in the scene, uh, yeah, click on the scene, you'll get to play initiate. We want to set the hearts to minus one, so make sure you set it to hearts. Uh, and then we also want to make sure we also want to be checking how much uh, health the player has. We can do this on the update sc uh, script for the hearts as well. Uh, so, is if the player has zero hearts, we want this. We want to reset the scene basically. So. If value compared with value, uh, I mean a variable compared with value, if the hearts are zero and disable else, we can say change scene and just set it to where it spawns. Uh, so this means if we die, we come back where we where we left off basically. Obviously, if we go into a different scene, we would want it to start in that scene. Uh, and that's very, very simple, but it should do the trick. So we can now press play and we can test it out. So it, currently you can see that the heart value at the very top is black. So this tells me there's something wrong. Okay, simple fix. I was I was just obviously uh, missing this value here. So on the uh, on update, I need to make sure that the switch is using the heart value. Should have known that instantly, but it took me a second or so. Uh, so yeah, so if we press play on that, we can uh, we can watch what happens. So we've got full hearts, and then we take hits, and it decreases the hearts. And because of the immunity, uh, like time a bit, uh, it basically. It doesn't let us get hit until we've finished being hit, which is uh, fantastic. So now if we attack, we can uh, obviously keep getting hit, but... But yeah, look, our hearts are going down. Fantastic. And obviously, may it seems like I might want the last heart to linger just a slightly bit longer. Um, but that's pretty easy to do. Let's, I'll just show you how I would do that. So in that update script, uh, what I want to do is say, so when it reaches the zero, I want it to put uh, the animation frame to that one, and then I want it to wait. Uh, we could even play a little bit of music here and be like, uh, you know, like the Pac-Man when you die sound. That would be a very appropriate. Uh, but yeah, so what happens now is you get the frame gets put to the black so you can actually see it going to zero hearts and then you wait and then uh, You get back out at the at the start. So let's try that Okay, so I also have realized that on the player hit in that group We also want to we want to make the subtract happen before we do the flashing so that the player knows uh, by looking at the hearts that they've been hit um, and it also means that it's updated before we do this uh, 0 0.4 second wait, uh, which makes it look more uh, like a meaningful thing. We can also make it so when we get reset, our hearts go back up. So um, obviously it's on scene initiate, but it might be a good idea to set the maths here as well. So I'm just going to set the value of of hearts to four just before we change just before we change scene. 
So let's give it a look and it should be done. This should be a UI health system. Okay, so we get hit once, twice, three times, four times, and we're dead. See that again? One, two, three, four. Fantastic. And the small wait time means that we have enough uh, time to react and uh, get out of the situation. Uh, rather than being completely annihilated instantly by three cats. Ooh. Uh, but yeah, the one thing I would change is the colors. I would want the uh, the heart to be red, uh, and when it's when it's dead, I like it when it's black. But uh, I might obviously the colors are easy to change. There's a got a tutorial on the palettes, and it's as simple as uh, just typing in different values. But yeah, if you uh, if you like this video. Uh, remember to leave it a like, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment for what you'd want to see next, and uh, I've actually uploaded this, uh, the files for this video up to my Patreon, so go over there and check it out if you want to uh, have access to the files. And thanks for watching!